Hey there, fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World, and today we're at the Guy Fawkes Inn in York, England. In this section where I'm staying for three nights when I'm visiting York, my favorite city to visit in England, okay? So, I'm already in a positive vibe mood because I'm here in York, and I want to give you an idea of what to expect if you do stay at Guy Fawkes Inn. And, and if you're wondering, Guy Fawkes, why do I know that name? Well, remember, remember the 5th of November, the gunpowder plot, you know, the guys that were going to blow up Parliament? That's that guy Fox, okay? And supposedly he was born here. He's from York, and so the rumor is that this is where he was born. And that theme of Guy Fox you see throughout the hotel. So each of the rooms have a different name of different conspirators from the gunpowder plot. So that's kind of cool. Also, they have kind of posters or signs all around talking about Guy Fox, talking about the plot. It's kind of an interesting thing to see because you do learn some history while you're having your fantastic breakfast when you're here. Now, since this is where Guy Fawkes was supposedly born, you have to realize that this place is a few hundred years old, and that's going to influence some of the things I talk about when we're here, because there's certain things you need to kind of expect when you come to England and you stay in inns that are literally hundreds of years old, okay? But in general, if I go through the room we got, and when I ordered online, I booked online through website, you can find this also on some of the third-party websites, but I do recommend booking direct with them because I got a 12% discount by booking direct versus using a third party. So I went to their website and booked through them and it was basically about 471 pounds for three nights combined, okay, with breakfast. So I thought that was a nice deal, especially if I think of the location because the location that Guy Fox in, I'm not kidding, right here behind me, I don't know if you can see there, that's the Minster. The Minster is right over there. Like it's right there. Like I'm looking out the window and there's the front of the Minster right there. I mean, it's literally, you are across the street from the York Minster. It is pretty cool, okay? You know, Stone Gate and Peter Gate, those main streets you want to walk on and pedestrian things. Yeah, they're, they're, one's right here, the other one's right over there. I mean, your location is perfect for a tourist when you're here. The shambles are just along the way, okay? It took me about, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes to walk here from the train station, dragging my luggage behind me. So to give you an idea of where it's at, it's pretty much a prime location, okay? So I think that's important to know. Now the room itself. So I got the four poster room, okay? Which was like the nice room that was here. And it has a nice little, you know, kind of set up station with a mirror and a desk you can set up if you wanna work or do your makeup or whatever. It does have cable television. The four poster bed, yes, it's an older bed and it's not the most comfortable bed. But the thing is, is my back doesn't hurt in the morning and I sleep really well in it. So it's not that it's a great bed. It's not that it's a bad bed. It's an acceptable bed. But it's cool because it's a four poster. There's a nice little like fireplace set up over here with a mirror. You've got, of course, since we're in England, you have a kettle to make some tea and it does come with tea and little cookie, cookies, biscuits for if you want a little snack in the evening or when you get up in the morning. So you have a small bathroom, not size enough for a fat guy like me to take a shower, okay? So that was nice. Straight up instantaneous boiling hot water when you're getting in the shower. So do be careful with that one. Um, the thing that I would say is if you're going to be coming here, one thing I want to, I want to kind of warn you about is since this is an old building, there's lots of undulations in the floor, on the steps, the stairway, these kind of things. So if you have kind of a tough time walking or limited mobility, this would not be a place for you to stay at. Okay. Just, I'm just going to say that if you, if you really, you're a wheelchair or limited mobility, I would recommend staying at a hotel like the Hilton by Clifford's tower. That is a hotel hotel with all the stuff that's going to help you around. Whereas this one. It's rickety stairs, and, and the thing is, the stairs, they'll warn you when you check in. I mean, they're leaning a bed. You're like, whoa, if I have too many pints at the pub, should I be worried? Because there's lots of pubs around here, okay? So you're going to have a good time to get lots of food and drink. But that is the probably one thing that you might be a little worried about if you are coming here. I know my mom would say something about that, but she's a little bit older. I just thought it was something important to say, but honestly, it didn't stop me from enjoying my stay here. Um, in terms of check-in, check-out, the front desk staff is available for check-in from 4 p.m. until 11 p.m. And then after 11 p.m., the bar downstairs, the restaurant downstairs, it's closed, and everybody goes home. So there's actually no one on property from 11 p.m. to about 7 a.m., okay? They do give you a number that you can call if you have issues, but in general, just know that there's nobody here during the evening time, okay? Now, in terms of check-out, you do have to be out by 11 a.m., They'll, they'll hold your bag for if you want because it's open during the day for the pub and the, the restaurant that's there as well. So you can do that. Um, one thing I'll say is everybody I talked to, all the bartenders, the servers, people that checked me in, everybody was professional. Everybody was super friendly and super helpful. So I, And I want to say kind, which was weird because like, you know, there's people that are friendly and but they're also kind about it. 
And that's one of the things you'll see when you're in the north of England is people are a lot more kind, feel more kind or more open. So that was really nice. Um, in terms of your food options here, yes, there is the, the full restaurant they have for, you know, dinner if you want to have dinner here, which was good. I ate here. I had the fish pie. It was nice. They have steak nail pie. Like I had cheeses. I had all kinds of stuff. So the food was good um, for that. But what you want to know is that you can actually charge your dinner to your room if you're staying here. And what you'll do is you'll pay for your room in one payment and then you'll give another card or give that same card again to have kind of like a, a standing bill. So if you eat, you know, dinner there, get drinks. Um, the breakfast, which was really good, you have options. What they'll do is they'll give you a card that will say, which breakfast would you want tomorrow? Do you want a full Yorkshire breakfast, which is, you know, the traditional kind of English breakfast kind of stuff where you have the sausages, the bacon, the black pudding, tomatoes, beans, mushrooms, toast, you know, and tea. They'll have that like as one of the options Then you can hit, you know, and if you don't want like a full fry up, like a traditional Yorkshire English breakfast kind of thing, they did have other options. There were Scottish pancakes you could get. There was salmon and scrambled eggs you could get. You could get Eggs Benedict. I got, I think it was called Eggs Royale, which was my muffin with poached egg and smoked salmon on it with a holiday sauce on top. That was pretty good. But you have a lot of options for breakfast when you're there. And what's cool is when you have the form, you'll check, hey, when you want to have breakfast. So they kind of have it ready for you. So you don't have to wait very long to get it. So make sure you're going to set your alarm so you wake up to get your breakfast, okay? Now, anyone that has stayed in an old inn in a historic city in England will tell you that soundproofing and light proofing, I guess, for better sleep is not always a thing that happens. I will give this to the guy Fox. These curtains here, which don't look like they're going to black out things very much, are actually very good blackout curtains. Like this room is pitch black when I close them at night. So that's really nice. And actually, when I wake up in the morning, you're still not sure if it's morning or night. So that's kind of a nice thing. So you really can totally zonk out when you're here. The lighting in the room itself, uh, I know Joss would say it's not the best for doing your makeup, let's say. Um, but that's kind of a typical thing in all hotels around the world. So it's not really a, a no, like something different, but just something to be aware of. Uh, Jocelyn would want to know if there's a full length mirror. No, there is not a full length mirror. However, my desk does have a kind of Curio 3 mirror thing. So it can kind of work as a full length mirror, but the traditional like wall mirror they don't have one of those here for that. So if you want to see your full outfit, you might need to set up your phone to take a picture of yourself. So how did I find the Guy Fox Inn overall? Actually, I found it wonderful. I will come back here and stay at this exact inn next time I come to York because one, the breakfast was really good. Two, it was a historic place that I really got to enjoy. And three, the location is perfect because I can literally, the Minster is right outside my window. The pedestrian streets are right there. I'm already in the thick of things so I don't have to come in from out of town or other parts. And it's really nice that way, okay? So if you're looking for a place to stay in York, I think the Guy Fox Inn was nice. And the thing is, there's tons of other inns here you can stay at. So, you know, that's this isn't the only one. There's plenty of places to stay, but I enjoyed my stay here and we'll be staying here again next time. So what are things you'd like to know about hotels when you go and stay in them? Let me know in the comments below so I can add it in to our future reviews so we can help people choose better accommodation when they travel. And I'll say bye from here in York, England.